Hello, my name is Armin and I'm a product specialist at Notch. In this tutorial, we'll talk about simple post-processing effects and how to apply them on your video. So let's get started. First of all, we'll make a new layer. So I'm going for File, New Layer. I'm going to call this Post Effects. And I'm just going to hit OK. So here I have a blank canvas and I think I'm ready to start. But before we actually build an effect, let's talk a little bit about video. In this case, I have one video file already available for me in resources. If I expand this tab, I can see the whole write-up of what this file is and what codec is it encoded in. So this one is encoded in Notch LC. If your video file is encoded in some other format, just drag and drop it. Notch will re-encode it into Notch LC for you automatically. Now, as you may have noticed, this video is marked up orange and orange markup indicates that we have a link to a file. So it's not embedded in the resources, it's just linked. But you can always choose to embed it by unticking the do not embed resource tick box. Now, this video file is actually contained in our work file as well. You don't have to do that. This is just a heads up on how would you do it. So before I add this video to the node graph, I think I'm going to show you two most common ways on how can you output video in Notch. So first and foremost this image 2D, and then we have image plane. So let me run you through the differences of those two nodes. As you see visually, they look quite alike. They have parenting in the top, output, and inputs in the bottom. Now, for them to work, all I have to do is connect it to the notch root node. Root node is a place where you set the basic rendering parameters. This is more relevant when you are going for 3D setups. Right, so I'm going to connect the root node to the image 2D, and I already see that my viewport is filled in with the white canvas. So basically, image 2D takes over the whole available space. Now I'm going to hit Control shift to unlink this node. I'm going to grab image plane. So alternatively, image plane fills only a specific portion of the viewport. And if I press Alt-G, I can see the grid. I can actually pan around in 3D. So if you're working in your 3D setup and you need a video loader, you would probably go for image plane. And if you work solely in 2D, image 2D is a good choice. So I think I'm going to stick with that for now. Great. So now I'm ready to pull in this video resource. As soon as I do that, I see that it came in as a video loader. And Video Loader has basic properties of uh, setting a frame rate. You can even choose another video via dropdown if you have more in your resources. And obviously, you can flip on the, flip it on the X and Y axis. You can even preview it in a viewport if you choose so. So in this case, I want to output this Video Loader via Image 2D. Now, I can achieve that by piping Video Loader to the first input of the Image 2D video node. And with that done, I'm more than ready to add some post effects to the setup. Right, so let's do that. Let's start with first post effect. I think we're gonna I think we're gonna grab dot matrix. So I grab dot matrix from the list and if I scroll down and check the post effect list, there's quite a few of them available here. So we're gonna try at least five today. Great, so now I have dot matrix in the scene. I'm gonna connect it to the root. And as soon as I do, I see that it starts to take effect. If you find yourself wondering on how one or the other post effect looks, you might as well just right click and go for the manual page or on the very node, click on a question mark and you will be brought to the manual page describing its behavior and showing off its looks. In fact, if you go to the top of the hierarchy of post effects in the manual, you will be prompted with a table of contents that shows majority of post effects as a little thumbnail. Right, so let's make some changes to this dot matrix post effect. I think what we want to start with is to change the mode. So instead of color, we're going to go for color and scale. Great. It is rather dark though. I think I want to change the blend mode of this post. Now mind you, 95% of the post effects in Notch has blend modes. I think in this case, maybe light will work best for us. Right, looking good. Let's add one more post effect. I think the next one will be vector blur. 
So I'm going to pull that to the scene and I'm going to connect it to the root. Ah, it came in and I see that it's quite active. I think we will make some alterations to this node as well. In this case, I think we don't need any dampening. And I think we again want to change the blend mode. How about something like negate? Cool, that looks funky. Um, perhaps we should change the orientation a little bit as well. Yeah, I'm kind of happy with the 150 look. It still retains the details, but it has this, this sort of distorted look to it. That's great. In fact, if I want to see how one or the other post effect looks at a specific time, I can just disable it and I will have the other one available for me. Or I can actually mark them all up and disable them at once. So control one disables and enables nodes. In fact, it works on any and all nodes in the node graph. Now, very important moment here. Uh, when we're talking about post effects and notch, stacking order makes a hell of a difference. So depending on how do you stack them from top to bottom or from left to right, it will change the outcome of your video. So notch always refers to post effects from top to bottom. And if it doesn't recognize the stacking order from top to bottom, it would always refer to from left to right. I think this will make even more sense when we're going to add more post effects. So with that said, I think we can move on to the third one. And the third one will be edge detect. Right, so I'm pulling edge detect to the scene and I'm going to press control R, R for the root, and it automatically connects to the root of the scene. Right. I think we might as well want to make some blend mode changes here too. I would say perhaps let's set it to additive and let's give it a little bit of color. There, something like that. Cool. So let's leave it at that. Uh, and I think the next one could be the threshold because I want to have a little bit more of a dark areas in this image. I'm going to connect it to the root. Oh, it's quite harsh. Yet again, a bit of a creative change in the uh, blend modes. Is there anything else that might look fun? Ah, I think multiply is the one. All right, the last thing that I want to do here is probably to add a colorlet. Now, colorlets are industry standard ways of grading your uh, videos with very little effort to a very, very good outcome. I have quite a few preloaded for me here in the resources. And as you see via drop down tab, I can choose any and all that I want from it. I think I'm going to go for Technicolor. All right, I think this is more or less pretty much done. Perhaps in the Edge Detect we could change the color a little bit. I will leave it to you to explore all the rest of the post effects available in the post effects list. Now again, a reminder, stacking order really makes a difference in your design. So don't forget to stack them from top to bottom or from left to right. Thank you for watching this tutorial.